We're Molly and Johan, a Swedish couple that have been sailing full time since 2016. After three and a half years of sailing, we welcomed our daughter Vera on board. Most recently, we bought a farm in Sweden where we are going to build our dream boat ourselves from scratch. So here you see her, the beauty. Welcome aboard and please subscribe for weekly episodes. Well, Martin is setting up uh, VR goggles and we're actually going to be able to walk inside of ROM 3. So he has um, a file, uh, a drawing of the boat and um, that connects to the VR goggles, look. And we can walk inside the boat, feel around, see like how big it is, how spacious it is and take notes if there is something that doesn't feel right or this is something we really like or if we want to change yeah. something. So this is a perfect um, thing to do just to get a better feel of what it, will, what it will feel like when the boat is ready. So Martin, he lives here in Skåne and he works with this. Um, usually they work with the car industry, but now he wants to get into the boat industry as well. So we are a little bit of test persons and for us, this is a perfect uh, opportunity. This will be very exciting. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. I think it's the right, t the timing yeah. is good as well because we still have opportunity to change things in there's the drawings. Still, yeah. There's still time to do yeah. that. So, yeah. So. I'm in the cockpit right now and uh, yeah, there are some things that we talked about before that obviously <laughs> needs to be changed. Like? Oh, the roof here is too low. Yeah. So we might lower the floor. This is so cool. It's a big boat. <laughs> good, good, good. I want that. <laughs> it feels wide. Yeah, does it, feel wide? it does. The cockpit feels really wide, I would say. Act a cover now. If you are tempted that when I sat that, I could kind of sit a little more from. Just trying out the seats next to the wheels, just to see how good the uh, line of sight is looking forward. <laughs> I'm next to the port settee in the cockpit, looking forward in the window into the salon. And I have to say, it's a very large cockpit area, especially the floor. But, Yeah, I don't think. It's going to dig around. Yeah, that's good. Om du sticker, om du sticker handen rakt fram nu, kommer buren då? Nej. Ah, okej, okay, då kan du ta gå ett steg till, men... Mm. Alltså man kan stå så och ja, hänga på det. Ja, om du sticker fram handen och tar på det, lägger handen. Ja, så precis. Så ser det är ju där. Är. Ja. This is super, super cool. I'm standing inside the forward cockpit, the V-berth, which would probably be our bedroom. It's a huge bed, and a good height, like I, n now I'm... Sitting down, yeah, pretty <laughs> high up. So we might be able to have some storage under the bed. Definitely. Um, a little bench or a little sofa on the side to sit down, and there would be plenty of room to have a, a cupboards on the on the walls, hanging there. Now this is so great to to be able to visualize what it will feel like inside. And we have this super open space here that connects the lower part of the, the boat and the, the deck salon. I think that will be a great feature. So it won't feel 
So basement oh. uh, down here. And that's the mast over there, yeah, I see. Okay, so now I'm walking into the, the head, the main head, head like bathroom. And the toilet. Well, it's not, it's pretty small. I thought it was pretty big. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, it's uh, big enough. It's definitely big enough and there is room to have like cupboards or shelves uh, on the walls. But this uh, wall here is in the middle of the port hole. Yeah, I saw that too. That doesn't look so good. And the, the shower is great and then we have a bench in the shower so you can sit down. Because I will hit my head here. Now I'm inside the second cabin which will probably Vera's room or Vera's cabin. It's a big bed. But you have to, you don't have headroom in there. Is there one like box coming down there? Yeah, that's the floor in the salon. Ser väldigt långt ut till masten. Men det är liksom, det blir rätt avstånd till masten. Ja, det är väl det. Oj, det So beautiful today with all the snow. We're in winter wonderland. In 48 hours, we went from like 10 plus degrees. Last week we had 14, 15 degrees Celsius. And now it's like minus five, below five. And we have this uh, snow fog. I don't know if you call it that in English. And it, it's like a, yeah, like a fog. It came in just in a couple of minutes. Now we can't even see the road up there. We just said goodbye to Martin and Sarah. It was so nice of them to come and let us use this VR. It was really, really cool. And it was super, it was super helpful. There were a couple of things that we want to change in the design. So we booked a second meeting with Martin and this time together with our naval architect. This way he gets to experience the boat, and it will be easier to make the changes. During the night we got 12 degrees below freezing, and we woke up to a crispy winter's morning. During the day the temperature rose and it started snowing, and the next day the snow was already melting away. Just quickly tidying up a little bit before we're gonna head in for lunch. I just quickly wanted to say a big thanks to everyone who's watching and especially who are a part of our Patreon crew. Because it really is thanks to all our patrons that our production is possible. Because it is only me and you one and we do everything from producing, scripting sometimes, what we're gonna say, filming, editing, uh, and at the same time, you know, building, sailing, so it wouldn't be possible without the support from our patrons. So if you enjoy our videos and our channel, it would really mean a lot to us if you would become a patron as well. It's a pretty typical morning here in the southern part of Sweden. Autumn morning, it's a misty and damp, high humidity low visibility <laughs> uh, i'm on my way to have a look at a few machines for the workshop for the barn um, that will be good to have for the boat build 
a planer and uh, some other tools. I just saw them in an ad yesterday and uh, I gave the owner a call this morning and he told me that he haven't used the machines for many many years but they should be in uh, good working order and the price is really good so I really hope that this is the machines that I'm uh, looking for. There was a lot of stuff in here, but for me it felt like a treasure cove. <laughs> the man used to work as a carpenter and had collected a lot of machines and equipment over the years. Wow, that that was really interesting. That guy had so many cool stuff in there. I mean, he had all the machines that I that I need, and good, real old school carpentry machines good quality stuff so I will put together a, a list and send to him and see and he will come back with the package price uh, for all the machines that I were interested in and uh, yeah the only problem is that these machines are really heavy stuff uh, just the planer I looked at that's around 500 kilos uh, so it's not stuff that you can just move around very easily um, so to have them transported I need to find a truck with a small crane but I mean the prices were really reasonable as well uh, that planer the big planer 500 kilo planer he wanted uh, six hundred dollars for that I mean it's an old machine but that doesn't matter it's quality stuff so that's a good price and another benefit of finding a guy like this who has everything is that it makes everything so much easier not having to you know have everything transported from different places I found a truck and now we were back to collect the machines I had decided to buy Finally, it's, everything is on the truck, and uh, now I'm just hoping that he can al also lift them from the truck and inside the barn. One pretty cool thing is that Jan, the guy who I bought the machines from, he's an old uh, carpenter, and he told me that he has an old warehouse about 300 kilometers from here, uh, where he might have a lot of cedar western red cedar uh, around three to four cubic meters of red cedar and he's thinking of selling that so <laughs> i just told him i'm very interested in that uh, so he's going to check with his sister he's 86 years old so he has a lot of stuff lying around and he's not uh, 100 percent sure how much it is and the quality but he's um, sure that he has some western red cedar so I'm really hoping for that so he will look into it and we will uh, talk again in a few weeks Is the truck arriving as well? Yeah, in a few minutes I really hope he can lift the machine straight into the barn he told me that the doors might be a bit too low. Hiring a truck did cost us some money, but it was such a smooth operation. The 
first stop was the heavy planer made from cast iron. And next up was the small table saw. This only weighed about 100 kilos. That's the drill press. We've gotten three machines into the barn and I think there's two left. And the most heaviest one weighed uh, 500 kilos. So it's really heavy stuff. Really sturdy machines. Exciting. The barn is becoming more and more of a workshop. Every workshop worthy of the name needs a proper carpenter's workbench. This one is never used, completely new. Uh, the planer needs some work, but... So these machines will mainly be used later on in the boat building process for the interior of the boat. And not so much now for the actual hull. Uh, because for the hull we need a lot of these wooden strips, around three kilometers of that. And this planer and that saw is a bit too small for all of that. So we hope to find a shop where we can borrow a four-sided planer so we can go on all four sides of those trips in one go. But it feels really great that we have these machines already now so we can place them out here in the workshop and see where it works the best to have them before the actual boat is in here. So that's it for this week. I hope you liked the video and see you next Friday. Bye-bye. Thank you.